الله اكبر الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله احمده واستعينه واستديه واستغفره وامن به جل وعلا ولا اكفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اصلاه بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهرهو على الدين كله والله كره المشركون all praise belongs to Allah we praise him we seek his help his assistance and his guidance we believe in him and do not disbelieve in him i bear witness that there is no god but Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a servant and messenger Allah said him that is Muhammad with Deen al-Haq the religion the way the methodology of truth and this way of life known as Islam will rise to its proper position in the world whether the mushriks like it or not Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Inna Allah yahmuru bil adl wal ihsan wa itai dhul qurba وينهان الفشاء والمنكر والباغي يئسكم لعلكم تذكرون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون الا وانتم مسلمون وَتَسْمُو بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا and hold fast all together by the rope which Allah stretches out for you and be not divided amongst yourselves كُنْتُمْ كَيْرَ أُمَاتٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَمَرُّونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ you are the best people raised up for mankind joining what is right forbidding what is wrong and believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hadith says uh, Salated by Tauban Rabbi Allah and who that they are. A messenger of Allah used to say recite three times uh, and it will help you on the doomsday or save you that uh, Allah is my lord or I believe in Allah is the lord. In Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as the messenger of allah and al islam adina al islam is the way of life that will give you certain protection we'll talk about as time go on these statements when rolled off the tongue might be very light 
But when you're confronted with it with your heart and with history, it is the weightiest encounter that you can have. And uh, this masjid right here and our other sinners bear witness to that. That when you say that I believe in Allah, that means you believe in all that the Quran is bringing from Allah. Right? And when you say that I accept Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the messenger of Allah. The Quran refers to him as Khatam and Nabiyin, the seal of the prophets, the last of the prophets. Khatam is locked, so when something's closed up, <laughs> you can't get nothing in there. So you can't, there can be no other prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Although there be great wise people, spiritual leaders, sages, wise men, all kind of people like that. But it won't be anybody that come that have specific risala letters from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in language, written in the language of the time. It won't, that's what khatam and nabiyin means. Out of three levels of prophethood, that, that, you know, that, uh, that exist, the third level is receiving why, that is, in words. There's two other levels that, uh, that are human, they, they're human experiences. Uh, Minwari hijab, the second level from behind a veil, you can get Messages and trances, and it, you can pick up things from nature, right? Uh, you can get things in a flash. You know what I mean? Type of inspiration. Something come to your mind you've been thinking about for years on and off, and you can't get no response. You lay down, and as soon as your head touched the pillow, bam, there's the answer. That's in a flash. So you have those three levels of uh, inspiration. Two are open to all of us. The last, the third one, Risala, a message. Inspiration directly from Allah. That's closed off to you and I. But in a flash, in Minwari, hijab, from behind a veil. A curtain, or in other words, a trance. <laughs> you're sleeping, you know. You notice so you get an idea when you have sleep, and then you go back to sleep, and you don't remember nothing about it, what it was. You, Man, I was, you should have wrote it down. Because they say those type of ideas are slippery fish, slippery fish. So you should write those down. Because usually when you wake up, that boy is gone. But anyway, in this Islamic movement, uh, we have to make a choice. And inshallah, we'll discuss those choices as we move along. Akula kawli hadha wa staffrullah li walakum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala khairul mursaleen, muhammadin al-nabi al-ummi, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd yaqulu allahu ta'ala fil Quran al-Kareem, inna allaha wa malaykatuhu yusaloon ala al-nabi, ya ayuha ladheen amanu salu alayhi, Wassalimu tasliman. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mulana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We might be able to see a little bit. My new glass is not here yet, so if I make a mistake, just 
hook it up with that. Anyway, <clears throat> oh, you believe when you meet a force, be firm and call on Allah and the remembrance of Allah and his message and the remembrance of Allah often and without uh, a doubt. At least you lose heart, your power depart, and be patient and persevering, for Allah is with those who patiently persevere. This is one of our favorite ayats on unity, because it talks about, it addresses us directly, Ya you alinina amanu, O you believe, and then it uses the term Thabatha. Thabatha carries with it the idea of discipline, self-control, and unity. And it says, oh, you believe when you meet a force, be firm. When you meet an enemy, show discipline, self-control, and stability. Remember Allah and remember his message. Because the remembrance of Allah is what's going to give you the type of strength, self-control, and discipline to hold on with a huge force like you may be encountered. You may be encountered a force or encountering a force that has you outgunned, outmanned, and even in some cases outdisciplined. So the only characteristic that you may carry with you is serious faith and stability. And this is what the Quran is talking about. Oh, you believe when you meet a force, be firm, Vabatha. Obey Allah and remember Allah much. Call on Allah much and often that you will be enhanced by that discipline. And he used the word later on uh, about re whom re is win. And it's admonishing us to be firm, patient, self-control, have this tabata, discipline, and what have you, and unity of group, unity of organization, that we have this esprit de corps, the, the spirit of the core the spirit of the group. And don't let no fitna fall in your ranks because what the Quran is saying, the wind will go out of your sails. That's basically what it's saying. Re is wind in Arabic and it's saying your wind will disappear. The, 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 the thing that you're using to carry that boat, carry that ship, out on the waves of life, right? Right, that wind will dissipate. So that's what it's telling us. Don't fall into no disputes, because if you do, you, the wind will go out of your sails. So people will ask, always wonder, well, why, with all the fitna that the people throw at us, why don't we respond? We don't respond because, number one, you got enough Fit now already. And number two, those people are probably hired to do the fitna that they do. And if you respond to them, you're either giving a, a voice, response, right, to their foolishness. So if you responded in the wrong way, the wind would go out of your sails. You wouldn't have the power, you have, wouldn't have the force, and you see it around the Muslim world today. The Muslim world today, the wind have gone out of many of them sails. But our crew, the wind have them went out of their sails. Right? If you talk about Yemen right now, the old dumb president is over there now, 
But he got to go over there because the, the people in Yemen had lasted too long. Houses bombed. Airports bombed. Food supplies bombed. Cut off from all incoming uh, supplies. Hospitals without any uh, facilities at all. The children, their arms look like the little fingers sometimes. Y'all seen them on TV? Right? That's because the richest Arab country in the world, Saudi Arabia, is fighting the poorest Arab country in the world. Right? With the United States help, with the United States aid, with British weapons, with British aid, with British support, right? And with the Zionists sitting back cheering it all on, and they ain't getting nowhere. Our people is holding on, I'm telling you, with their hind teeth, the Hadith called it the hind, because if you got it with your hind teeth, you ain't going nowhere. They're holding on. If you look at Hezbollah during the 2006 encounter, Everybody said, oh, boy, boy, them people going to be, the Zionists going to wear them out. And come to find out that you could watch American TV and see Zionist soldiers sitting on tanks crying real tears. We can't find them. We don't know where they at. They got to do it. And like, you know, the Indians used to have a ghost dance. It didn't work a lot of times, so they get shot. But it was supposed to make you invisible. But I'm telling you, Hezbollah was invisible. All of their tunnels, everything was working fine. The Hezbollah in 2006, and we told them that. Uh, we had some uh, uh, Mubashir. We had three sets of tapes. That's good news, right? Everybody was panicked about what was going on. We thought, oh, that's going to be good news. They thought, man, this man here is smoking something and he's drinking something along with it and might be doing a little snorting because this boy is a Mr. Boat. And we tell him, oh, no, no, that's good news. We call him Mubashir. You know, like a Mubashir, he brings good news. Moses was a Mubashir. He brought good news. They combined tactics. The military strategists today are studying what Hezbollah did in Lebanon in 2006. They combined stage one tactics with stage two tactics, and they used them with third, second and third generation weapons. The Zionists had fourth and fifth generation weapons, and they combined them in new strategies and new combinations that they were able to beat the Zionists, whoop they behind. And everybody says, what? All the Arab world loved the Hezbollah for a while. Saudi money quieted them down. Hezbollah is our friend. <laughs> when we was over on A Street, uh, from all our programs all over the world, we would get uh, letters every now and then with the Hezbollah logo on it, you know, from Lebanon. Oh, we miss you. We ain't seen you. So when our next program we had in Tehran, I told her, I said, hey, man, would y'all do us a favor? We know we like y'all and y'all like us. That's fine. But we happen to be in America. So if you can find a way to stop sending us Get well cards and greetings and how you doing, stuff like that. Boy, it'll be fine with us. And we ain't scared of nobody, right? But we out there, I'm telling you, I got pictures with the brothers because sometimes I say, here, you, here we are in a program in London. You are Alam, right? Yes. You're the secretary of Hezbollah. Yes, I am. When we get around, you put on a suit and take your turban off. When we come to the program, you put your abba and your turban on here in London. Why do you do that? It's, you know, what are you talking about? Why do I do that? 
He said, loved it. I said, well, why? Because he was the one doing it. We was friends, you know. Uh, you could see sometime taking pictures when we go into a program. He's sitting there. I said, he's, he said, well, we were just sending y'all. I said, yeah, to America. Who runs America? Well, the Zionists. I said, the same people that hate you. And you sending us get well cards. And how you doing? That was over on 8th Street. So we had to tell them, hey, thank you very much. We love you too. But let's keep it private and, and not public. Uh, and not that nobody's scared of boss man. But the point is this, dear believers. People we associated with are doing a good job. And they're paying a high price to it for it too. Whether it's in Yemen, whether it's in Lebanon, Right? Whether it's the Iranians, they always try to give us the bad news about what Iran is doing. Those are, are miracle resistance movements. I call them a miracle resistance movement because of what they have to go up against on a constant basis to survive and to thrive. Okay. If you look around here, you say, you might say, yeah, but that's not working here in America for y'all. I say, not only is it working, it's working super duper double triple. So they say, how is that? I say, you're not looking at anything. I say, if you look outside, you'll see cars that's not working. If you look in the backyard, You'll be looking at cars that don't work. You'll be looking at a truck runs like a top, but it don't work. I say, if you look at uh, houses, well, we use a masjid, but you can see stuff falling apart. It's no big deal at all. If you look at the property just right here. Of course, we own all the lot across the street, up on A Street, and all that, da, 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 down the street, next door, and all that. And you don't see nobody in none of them. What? They're not being used. Your cars are being hindered from working. You're not sad? Of course not. I'm not sad. Why would I be sad? Number one, when we came here from Oakland, we knew what we was having in Oakland. I'm not going to go through every bit of the thing. But when we come here, we knew what we was going to de be dealing with because we had came here for speeches mm, back in 84. We was out at IAC, 85 and a few more times. So we was here. And also we knew the Negroes that was here. And we knew the Iranians was here. We knew the amount of, uh, it's a federal city, so you could imagine what you're dealing with. And we came anyway, like we told y'all a long time ago. We came here for a specific reason. We said if we could last five years, we're going to get all the game, because the government going to throw everything in the arsenal at us. And we survived five years, this is up in the 30s now. Tell the truth, we better just over there. We said, we had our calculator out. From history, from the past, from our movements, right? no matter what you think about our movements, you can tell how long somebody lasts, how much discipline and self control and spiritual reserves that they have, you can calculate all of that stuff. That stuff is real. So here we are, it's way up in the 30s. If we got here in 89, this is a oh, while. Wow. This is what, 33 years, something like that? Sure it is, 33 years. In fact, our birthday was a little while ago, last month. Technically, we got here June 23rd. 
we had an old station wagon full of books. And we came from Canada and we had, we had sold $1,800 worth of books up there. And that's what we came here with. And within a few years, we had bought all the property, eight pieces of property that we have, and had been hassled out of thousands of dollars from the government, <laughs> right? You say, well, that ain't nothing. Well, we say, look, what have the Negroes here in D.C. done, born and raised in D.C.? Right? Look around the Masajid. Look around the centers. If you think, oh, we only got two or three people here, they don't have nobody because they don't exist anymore. Right? They're in jail. They've been set up. They've been run crazy. Right? I don't care if it's ANC, they've been closed down. It doesn't make no difference who they are. Nobody is standing. When I say nobody is standing, that means nobody is standing up and for the people, for Allah, and against the Zionists. They just know, hey, go find some. Let's see you. Go, go grab a hold of the anti-Zionist movement in D.C. Go ahead. Let's see where they're at. <laughs> That's what I want to see. So, it's a miracle. We're not sad because all this don't work and that don't work. We're happy to be here, right? When you outrun everybody in the race, well, you could say, if I didn't have an overcoat on, if I didn't have lead shoes, boy, I could have really ran fast, faster. But with all that, you outran everybody else, right? So what do you want? That's why when you read this hadith in the Quran, I'm satisfied with Allah's Lord. Yes, then the Quran is telling you certain things, right? And a lot of things, everything in there is good for you. But according to your development, it may not taste good to you. You, <laughs> oh man, that discipline, I don't particularly. But the more you use it, the more you stick with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you that which you need to carry out your mission. So we're in another, I'm saying that to say we're in another stage now, and we'll talk about it probably on Sunday. We're in another stage. And we've left behind all the stuff we've been talking about. That stuff is all, we might as well call it in the past. We're not bringing it with us because it's getting in the way, right? This is like all the other stuff back in the 80s and all back in the... We don't bring that with us. Why? Because it's baggage. But we bring the knowledge of what was going on so that Muslims don't get bit from the same hole twice. You see what I mean? This just is normal. So, here we are right now. It's just, this is a great time for the movement. But the challenging faces the Muslims, uh, the challenging challenges facing humanity uh, are bigger than anything we've read about in history. And therefore, we have to rise to the occasion. We have to rise to the occasion because the enemies of Islam are destroying the world in which we live in. Before, you had to watch out for a little flood here and there, uh, the people of Sada Gomorrah, maybe atomic bomb, something to blow them up and straighten them out, but that was regional, right? Everything, because it in many cases, the Quran had hadith say, so-and-so was sent with a message to his people. Right? 
our time, we don't have none of the credibility of messengers and messengership and all of that, but we have the same message that they got. <laughs> right? We got the same message that they got. That's why we're in good shape. We know what the enemy's plan is. That's why we said, talked about the Bata. Do not fall into disputes. The worst thing you can do is fall into disputes because the wind will go out of your sails. Your power depart and every, all your unity will discipline will go away. So don't do that, right? So ati Allah, ati Rasul. Remember Allah. Obey Allah and his messenger. Right? That you gain falah, success. That's what it says in Arabic. So look. No matter what you think, we're in good shape here. We're in better shape than anybody we can see. It don't make no difference what they say. It don't make no difference about nothing. Because so remember, you got to remember, you read the Quran, you read the Hadith, you read history, you read all of that, and then you try to come up with something where your behavior fits in with the Quran, fits in with Hadith, right? Fits in with the historical process, right? The rise and fall of nations. That's what our behavior is. That's why we named ourselves a Sabakun. To go out first. To win in a race. Sabakun go out and do what should be done. And they don't, they're pioneers. Right? They're not settlers. Let me go back again. They're those who lead the way. Those who guide the way. But they're not settlers. You know the pioneers, the mountain men in their old days, they had their rifle and a few things, and they was on a message, I mean, of discovery. They built the trail for everybody else. They were not settlers. The settlers came behind them. Think about it now. They always came behind. And with the settlers came the army to keep the hostiles, you know, and all that in check. Asabakun, those who go out first, those who lead the way, or those who show the way. Sometime I talk to you about Asabakun. Asabakun got big time protection. <laughs> Asabakun, look at here. If I told you some of the things that happened, look, you might bend over to tie your shoe and then a baseball bat go right by your head. You may be walking down the street at a 10-story building up there and a refrigerator fall out and uh, something snatched you from behind and you stop and turn around and the refrigerator fall right in front of you. Sounds like a cartoon, don't it? Tell the truth. <laughs> it sounds like Bugs Bunny. And them guys, you know, Elmer Foot always trying to shoot him. And the road runner, the thing trying to get the road runner. That's what we make boss man look like. That's the way we feel about boss man. Beep, beep. And we often gone. And boss man, look, boss, don't play like you don't know that boss man been doing what he been doing all that time. If it was, the cars would be running out there. Right? Tell the truth. If he wasn't doing it, everything would be fine. Right? So he's doing what he do. And we just going to beep, beep. <laughs> you got to have fun at what you do. I'm telling you, if you sit up and get mad and roll your eyes every time boss man do something to you, you'll never get nowhere. The greatest part of psychological warfare 
or psycho guerrilla warfare. Now we're into a new stage. This is psycho spiritual warfare. What does psycho spiritual warfare? Well, if you're going to go to war with a big monster, you try to incorporate something that he don't have. Isn't that right? You're going to use an atomic bomb? No, he got more than that. You're going to use Negroes? No, he got every Negro in his pocket. There ain't nothing you can do. The Negroes bomb him. Well, what are you going to use? The past, period before, remember we have periods. This period is this revolution and evolution. We, got, we know what periods we're in. That was psychological guerrilla warfare. That means a small group with not a whole lot in their hand, right, had to use psychological counter-Zionist warfare to defeat that system, which we've already done. We've made a fool out of them that period. I'm saying going backwards and run them crazy. Now, you know, when you tease something, you got a ring, you tease the old guy, and he gets so mad, he starts swinging everywhere. What's boss man doing now? Have you seen anything go right for boss man? Just think about it. Write it down. If you didn't see anything go right, let's say that maybe Ukraine. It went right. That's sure. It's going right. Isn't it going right? Why? Isn't everybody on boss man's side? Boss man can't even evacuate people right. Your niggas can't go. We want the white, blonde, had blood. This is a few months back. What? This is the worst thing you could do and the whole world is watching. Tell the truth. They're trying to win the Africans and the Indians and all the people from Africa and India. They can't go to Poland and other places, right? They keep them in the train station for months with their little children crying, right? On TV. <laughs> and then they want them people to be on their side. Where they come from, right? I'm telling you, you know the old song, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. That's the way boss man is. Boss man, if it don't be for bad luck, that boy wouldn't have no luck at all. I'm telling you. He just, and he can't get no worse. It looked like he trying to mess up the world, right? We don't want none of you people uh, buying Russian oil and gas, whatever they said. And Saudi Arabia, we you know that now today, right? Your friend, the old boss man, the old man, that boy. You talking about a pitiful man? Now we should be happy when they make a mistake and they mess things up, right? We should laugh like, I don't do it. I say, I feel sorry for him. When that old stringy head man run out and he started talking and he forget what he's saying and he did, it looks pitiful. I say, he ought to quit. He ought to take a leave of absence. Then he couldn't do nothing because then he'd had other old crazy lady. The half Indian, half Negro lady. From Oakland, talking about we're a part of the civil rights movement. <laughs> Not that I'm from Oakland. Said, well, that's really something. So I know you, as the Secretary of State, check the paperwork. She tried to put all the niggas in jail, the parents, that their children didn't go to school right. She said, Y'all just, I'm telling you. And this woman, if you think the boss is dumb, that's a president. She's dumber than him and younger. She looks fine, a nice lady. But she ain't got no sense. Right? Can you imagine anybody being lower and they got some poles that they have? Right? Tell the truth. Y'all didn't see it. Boss man, this boss man, I think he lowered it. You can get, you can't, he's below sea level something. Uh, below water, whatever it is. You don't like your house if you owe more on it. 
he's so low in the polls, they don't give him a chance for nothing. And the later they sent that down to Mexico, the border. And I tell you, boy, that child don't have no sense at all. Isn't that right? So why wouldn't we be happy? It's better to laugh your enemy into their crazy house that they built than have to murder and kill them on a certain day. Isn't that right? That's our policy. We're going to laugh boss man into the crazy house. Yes, he's going. I don't care. He's already there. He's already in St. Elizabeth. We just, he can come out now for a visit every now and then. But the boy don't make no good decisions, right? He's actually insane. He makes no correct decisions. Now, of course, you, we know y'all, we told y'all a long time ago, we was going to take credit for that. Now, didn't we tell you? Now, don't say, see, uh, it's part of psychological guerrilla warfare. So we telling the boss man, you acting a fool because you was messing with us. I told you this, not to mess with us now. Didn't we tell them? Y'all been here on the cookbook. Anybody remember this stuff? Nobody remembers? Okay, let me repeat it. We said that we taken credit this is years ago for all the mishaps that happened to boss man because he was treating us bad. Don't nobody remember that? Oh, I thought so. I thought I said, hold on, I know y'all remember some of this because we have said it 80 times. Look, well, why did we say that and why did we have somehow we read the Quran, right? We read the Hadith, we read the historical realities, and we put the timing together. It's time for him to go. This is all, it, it says that. It don't say that in exact words that tomorrow, next week, two weeks from now, boss man is headed in the dust. But it gives you all the historical, biographical characteristics, right? It gives you all of the building blocks that have to be knocked over for a last program to come into fruition. fruition. It don't have to happen, but this is the sunnah, sunnah of Allah. He has set up things on his pattern, like the universe is set up on the pattern that Allah established. Now, let me go on here a minute. You have to have confidence in yourself. This comes after a while. But look, we was here on day one from the struggle, all from the freedom rides, like 1960, 61. All the riots in the cities. 64, 65. By 65 and 66, we own the money. By 68, we got a program in Oakland. Same program Martin Luther King wanted to do in 1968 in Chicago. We were already doing it in Oakland, East Oakland Enterprises. And it was successful. But after a while, boss man got your number. Pretty soon, the shops, the businesses, all the properties we owned in Oakland, right? All the properties we help other people own, they got to keep most of theirs. But our property was targeted by the government. Pretty soon, if you think it's lonely here, can you imagine being in Oakland, the town you're born and raised in and everybody know you, and ain't nobody talking to you? In 68 and 69, they said we hired more people than the city of Oakland did. He said, this is the mayor of Oakland. By 71, we were ready to go. We said, boss man, and ran, ran a game. But we studied what we did then and we studied what was going on at that time. We studied it digitally, digitally, diligently, 
diligent. You know what he really had it. Okay. Therefore, when we went to South America, January 1st, 1972, you wouldn't believe it, but I won't even say this too much to talk about. Within a few months, we hooked up down there. And we super flying number two already for those days. When we took a bag, a big bag of money back to Algeria where the black movement was headquartered, the Black Panther Party, they was gone. They was all gone. So I went down to Tanzania where I used to live. And guess what? That's where I found them. <laughs> they had got put out of Algeria. On the news back here, Eldridge Cleaver was saying, those Arabs, they didn't like us, and they put us out. My friend that I I'll see I get messages from, he said it wasn't that. He said, this is what he said, 72, 73. He said, vagina got us put out of uh, Algeria. Do you know what the, the, the slow Negro was doing? From here, he took the Negro customs and habits right off Benning Road, and he took them to Algeria. Without any slow, slowness, without any transition, nothing. And they told me in 70... One, when I was there, he said, now, man, if you want to get the nice ones, the ones that really like niggas, get them ones in Algeria. Look in the history book. They wore a niqab back in those days. Some women wore miniskirts, but you couldn't. They were just wearing them because of the French style, but you wasn't getting no play. You know, when you went to a nightclub there, it was nothing but men in there drinking tea. That's all they was doing. And we didn't like it. I said, man, this is, this is really, uh, white folks will say, this is a bummer. You go in there, there ain't nothing but men. You know, you go to, what did you go to nightclubs for to catch women? Isn't that right? And you go at a nightclub and it ain't nothing there but people drinking coffee and, I mean, no, tea. And I said, man, this is a bummer. But the Negro got put out of Algeria because they was hitting on, having sex with. The main women they liked the most was the ones in the cab. When I came back in 73, after I left in 71, I told them when we was in another town, another city, I said, y'all lucky you didn't get killed. you lucky they just put you out. You know what I mean? Can you imagine? They didn't know nothing about Islam. Black power, it ain't nothing. Hey, look, I'm going to tell you something. The women are wearing niqab, all that stuff, for a reason. That's what I told them when I got back. I thought they had enough sense. I said, anybody would have enough sense to know that. They didn't. They was colored, I tell you. It ain't no fun being colored in a place where coloredism is not the style. And they was in Algeria with people who was getting their Islam back, right? Getting their language back. You should see their teachers from those days. You know where they got their teachers from? In Algeria, the colonial powers, France, had destroyed the language. The number one language in, in those colonies was French. The number two language was Arabic. I'm telling you, I asked brothers in 71, I said, hey, man, Teach me your language. You know what they said? Ah! Learn French. 
I'm telling you, I remember it just like it was yesterday. So later on in the 80s, when you see the, the new professors, they had to hire to get their language back. They had to hire a whole new group of teachers, Arabic teachers, Arabic professors from Egypt. And guess what? Who went? The government Abdul Nasser was down on the Iquan, down on Arab liberation, down on the Islamic movement. So they educated, right, Arabs from Egypt took the boat to go to Algeria. That's why by the mid-80s and the early 90s, you have the rebellion and you have the Islamic movement, right, going real strong in Algeria because the Egyptians who were under the gun of Abdul Nasser migrated with their degrees and everything to teach the Arabic language in Algeria. Therefore, now in Algeria, they speak good Arabic. Retaught to them by the Egyptians. Retaught them by the Iqwan al Muslimin who brought the Islam, brought the Islamic movement with them. Because the Islamic movement was dead in Algeria when I was there. Ten years later, it's back on the road. Fifteen years later, it's, it's, it's there. Never give up hope of Allah's soothing mercy, right? Because none gives up hope of Allah's soothing, soothing mercy except those who have no faith. That's why Allah instructs us in the Quran, go see about Joseph and his brothers. Same instruction you get. You go and see about the people. We're in America, and I'm going to move the water closed. Look. It don't make no difference what you think is going on. We're here in America, and we, at our headquarters, going to keep coming with Islam ciento por ciento, 100%. That's the way we get it out of the book. It don't make no difference what they like. It don't make no difference what they do. We're out to please Allah. Not them bums. In closing, study where is everybody headed? Right? Who's making fun of who nowadays? The old dumb president goes somewhere and everybody starts laughing. Hey man, here come old, here come the white man, the boss man. Right? I bet you he don't remember his name. So they go up, they say, Ah, Mr. President. They don't say Mr. President because I'd give him a key to. You know, if you know you're the president, then he might not. So I said, well, well, what's going on? What's going on where? What's that in your pocket? What pocket? Right? What's your speech going to be about? What are you going to advise? Advise, advise, advise who going what? Where, where are we at? Well, you're in Palestine. Oh, that's, that's where he was today. Right? Tell the truth. Isn't that the way you've watch, been watching TV lately? When I watch comedy, I don't watch Bugs Bunny now. I tell you, I don't I bother with them a long time ago. I watch Boss Man. And I go to sleep with a chuckle every time. Oh, and I, I'm a close. Y'all used to be mad at Trump. I couldn't wait to get back. To, I just like to cook. Well, as soon as it's over, I'm right back. Let me turn on Don. What Don say? He have his hair, have his hair to comb. Then he had a big bald spot and the hair go over it. I mean, why do people do that? 
why do bald-headed people comb all of this hair over the bald spot and think it's, it's cool? Every, don't, don't nobody know what I'm doing. It, that's the emperor have no clothes. You see what I mean? That's the way America is now. They're so stupid. that they, Everything is obvious. It's ridiculous. You don't have to do nothing to them. All you got to do is stand at the bottom of the hill and wait. They're going to be come by in a speeding boat. They're going to be rolling. Dear believers, I just want to say in closing, uh, we're going into a new period right around now. And the last decades have been the best decades that I can imagine for a movement with our structure. It's been wonderful. What do you mean, wonderful? They did that. So, Mike, what did you think you're going to say, la, 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 la? In America, Zion is controlled and you're just going to a playland, a Disneyland. No, no, no. I'm saying, with who we are and what, who they are, we didn't have the best time we could imagine. We couldn't imagine it being this nice. And it's fun. And I close with this. Remember what the coach would always tell you, boys, you done did all the training. We done trained you. We had training coming out of years and everything. So now this game, let's go out and have fun. In other words, you didn't train that you know everything it blindfolded, right? So you want to win this game? This is the Super Bowl or the Rupert Bowl or whatever they have, Orange Bowl, the Green Bowl, Cotton Bowl. They even got a, they got a Cotton Bowl, yeah. They might have a Sugar Bowl. They don't, I guess not. But they're they going to get one. You stick around. Anyway, I'm telling you, believers, you couldn't ask for more than what we got. in the environment we're in. You're not judging by their criterion. You're not judging by their criterion. If you do, you're slow. We thank Allah for everything that's been going on and will continue to go on. We believe that the uh, They got you all scared. This, they going to blow each other up. They going to do this. I got a feeling that uh, it's going to take a turn soon. If the young people, you know, the little white girl, Greta something or other to do the, from Sweden. No, not Sweden. Whatever. It is. All her and all her friends, they want to see a better world. Right? They want to see a clean world. And you do too. You just stuck there with boss man and you listen to him too much. The world is changing. So I ask you, since we're here, why not go for it? Give it a shot. Just say to yourself, if that nigga can do that and we know the Zionists hate him and we know I'm gonna give it a try. So Every now and then, just, just try it. Just sneak and do something good and it fits. Then after you get away with that, then sneak and do a little bit bigger. Pretty soon you'll say, shoot, ain't nothing happened. Then do just like, uh, I'm going to do good whether they like it or not. You might get a big bust upside the head, but give it a try. You're going to be called to account for all of this. And remember... And I close with this. Don't do nothing then. Leave your wives and children to boss man. He'll take care of them. He'll have them crazy, broke, running in circles like him, right? They'll follow him down the drain. Yeah. Forget about it. Let boss man Run your family life and lead your family life. 
let him run the world. You see how nice it is now? See how clean the air is? Isn't it nice and clean? Of course it is. See how healthy everybody is? I'm a close, but they can't even get people to join the army no more. Well, they get them to join. But they got to train them for I don't know how long because they're so fat. Isn't that true? Am I lying? They know you can't. They can't. You know they used to just snatch you up. Come here, boy. We got you in the army. You just let it hang it, bring you over there and throw you in the army. And pretty soon, if you were skinny, you uh, in good shape, stronger, big neck, everything. Right? That's the way they used to be. Then, if you was fat, too fat, you didn't trim down. They'd run that fat off of you. Now, I think they're going to start giving them fat removal operations. I bet you they will. They cut about 200 pounds of fat off of you, then put you in there. That's guaranteed. That'll be guaranteed with the modern, when you join the Army, instead of joining the Navy to see the world, you join the Navy, we're going to cut off 200 pounds of fat off of you people. I'm telling you, that's where it's getting Right? Because the people are sitting mesmerized. It used to be just TV. Why Johnny can't read? That ain't nothing now. They got, you can push the button, boy, and I'm telling you, a rabbit will fly out, everything will happen. This modern technology is something else, I'm telling you. It's, it's gone. And it's took everybody with it, right? The people won't even walk to the store. I had a family like that. Ring, 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 ring. Send me six packages of Chinese food. Send me some of the rice and noodles. And the thing pull up right there with the stuff. They won't walk to the store. They won't even drive. It's not my family. It's everybody. Right? And this coronavirus, whatever it was, made it worse, right? The people got used to staying at home and calling. Now you can't get them out of the house. Tell the truth. Isn't that right? Now, right now, right this minute. How many of your family? Ring, 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 ring. What y'all got up there today? Oh, we got Jamaican rice. We got the Negro this here. Well, send me five packages of that. And a big, you got any sugary drinks? Send me a gallon. I'm telling you, people is crazy. Not a gallon, but a half a gallon. Or you can go get a big gulp, right? What does it say? 44 ounces? Do you know how much sugar that is? Tell the truth. You go, they, don't they have them in all the stores you go to? The big old whatever they got? You go get some ice, about two little drop of ice, and you go to the soda machine, what, cup, what type of cup you get? You can get 32 ounces. That's all right. You can get 44 ounces, which most people get, right? And then what they do, they drink it. They drink it five pounds of sugar per gulp and sit there in front of the mirror swelling up. You can see the people now swelling up. Here's a drink, right? Just like blowing up a tire. Tell the truth. Isn't that what's happening? Yeah, yeah, I'm not lying. You know, all our family and friends, they all do it, you know. Tell the truth. This is pitiful. So you shouldn't hurt people like that. You should help them. That's why we ain't here to hurt nobody. We're here to help. We just all. And I'll close with this. Before, all the dope was in the black neighborhood. Well, and even in the old days, was white. they had a thing that the mean old white man, he said, I'm going to kill everybody. So he had crank and acid for white folks. This is in the 60s. And he had heroin for Negroes. And they worked. In Detroit in 67, 68, they took over the city. By 71, you look at the 10 
most drug-filled cities in the 70s, they were all the most revolutionary cities by the numbers in the 60s, right? And then the white folks, to get them off the track, they had clear light, orange, sunshine. Y'all remember that? I said, oh, they're too young. That's okay. You didn't miss nothing. You didn't miss nothing but Zoom. You want to see somebody plastered and just... You try some of that white folk stuff, that acid. You will be just like that. Maybe days. Then when you finish with that, you get your little crank. Crank, crank that nigga up. Water, we used to call it. It's how you're moving. Crystal meth. In fact, that's what they ought to get the soldiers before they go in the army. You got to lose 500 pounds. We're going to put you on a one-month methadrine crystals, uh, crystal meth program. Tell the truth. Will they lose all bit of that 500 pounds? Boy, they, when they come in there ready to join the army, their mouth will be all sucked in. Their teeth will be falling out from crying or two, right? Their eyes will be big. Then all they have to do is put them on a couple of weeks program to, Dry them out from that and they're ready to go in the army. Why'd I do that? Save them a lot of money. Because they ain't going to get no sleep. Tell the truth. Anybody ever use crystal meth? You ain't going to get no sleep. I tell you, I'm a close, but I, uh, look, I'm not saying I used to sell a little, but uh, it moved kind of fast. So I didn't go to the movies in those days. I'd go to nightclubs, you know, because they'd have. But my entertainment was 1 o'clock in the morning, the people coming to get that crank, right? And they come, they white, white in the side of their mouth, eyes big. Yeah, big crank to me, and I need some of that, uh, uh, da 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 And uh, they paranoid, of course. I used to wonder why is people standing in the window with a crack in the window with a butcher knife. I was trying to figure that out. That till I knew what crank do it, you get it makes you paranoid. So every you could tell who was using crank. All you do is you drive by a house, you see a little slit in the in the window of the curtain. That nigga up there speeding. You know. Anyway, we got through that. But boss man. And I'm going to close. Don't worry. How mean is he? Yes, he knocked all the Negroes over <laughs> with, with Haran. I said Negroes. I will tell you why I said that. I was in Florida. I don't mean to just go off and I'm going to stop in two minutes. But we had a, 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 when I was in the penitentiary in Florida, it was a, a, a white man that had took a boat and went to Cuba. And I was the imam, and uh, he was a kind of revolutionary. And uh, so, of course, he was from the south. He said, Abdul, why the brothers be so mad at me? I told them I love niggers. He thought they were saying niggers. He was saying, Negros, you know, Negro, y'all from the South. You remember the, what the old wife? Uh, okay. So he used to say, Abdul, that's what he used to call me. I was the imam down there in Florida. I told him, he came to all our meetings and everything. He was a revolutionary. He said, I told the brothers, I tell them every time, I say, I love Negros. He was saying Negros, N-I-G-R-A-S, not N-I-G-G-E-R-S. He was saying that the old Southern, I'm just from the South, so I knew what he was saying. So I told him, I said, he just, uh, he's on our team. He stole a boat to go to Cuba. He's a revolutionary. He did it. That's why he's here in the federal penitentiary. I said, he always calling us niggers. I said, you see, that's the difference. You're not listening. 
he said, uh, Abdul, I tell them all the time I love Negroes. I know what he was saying. Because I understand old Southern talk. Yes, did he? Nelly Bout. I'm Nelly Bout, 70 years old. Nelly Bout, near about. Yes, did he? Yesterday, right? These were young Florida Negroes. They didn't know none of that old stuff. I was lucky, so I told him, I said, a man is saying he lacks niggas. But he called us niggas, white folks. I said, he called you nigra. N-I-G-R-A. Nigra. Don't you know what a nigra is? He's trying to say negro. Nigras. All them negras over there. He ain't saying niggas. Anyway, it's fun. That's the way you got to look at the movement. Don't take it so bad. You got people on your team and don't know it. I'm telling you, you know, they don't know what they're doing. You got white folks. If you get all rid of, rid of all the white folks, you'll get rid of half your friends. If you get rid of all the, the Negroes, you'll get rid of 20% of your friends. So, in other words, it's all mixed up now. Right? We're in the Southeast because this is part of the mission. But we have to rescue humanity now because boss man going to mess it all up. So the next go round. Now I'm going to tell you, this is going to be a fun ride. If you scary about going, if you, you shouldn't be scary on a, you know, what's that thing, the roller coaster. Masjid al-Islam stays on the roller coaster. And we go, you can hear the thing ticking way up, then it goes, that's the way it is here. You can't be hollering, oh! Oh, we're going to crash, right? We're going to die. No, that's the ride. That's, that's what, ain't nothing we can do about it. That's the ride. <laughs> so, but try it. That, that, you know, I don't, I don't believe you're going to get killed or hurt too bad. But you'll have a lot of fun. And I'll really close this time. The fun I have, I ain't never had this much fun. Talking about boss man, and I'm close, believe it or not, we write 96% of the time. Tell the truth. Have you ever heard anything here that didn't click off? Click, 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 click. Uh-uh. Join on up. You don't have to tell nobody. Just... Be a little sincere what you're doing. And then don't tell the boss man everything. Just tell him mm, 88% of the truth. Lead the other 12 off. He don't know. He don't have no idea. The only reason you tell him the truth and he write down what you say and that's what he go by. Oh Allah, we seek thy refuge from anxiety and grief. We seek thy refuge from lack of strength and laziness. We seek thy refuge from cowardice and niggardliness. We seek thy refuge from being overpowered by debt and the oppression of men. O oh Allah, suffice us with what is lawful, keep from us what is prohibited. With thy grace, make us free from want of what is besides. Amen. Ikamatisalat.